So, oh well, so so let, let's start with the second workshop today. So, um, uh, and, and here today with uh, Miren joining from Madrid. Uh, Miren and I work together in professional services in Google Cloud, a lot of times with uh, topics around data flow and Apache Bean. And today we are going to be talking about uh, state and timers. We are going to be actually doing an example very similar to the previous one that we have done in streaming with Windows, kind of similar, not exactly the same. Um, and then, so Miren is gonna start introducing the problem, and then we will switch over to like to the hands-on uh, coding part. So Miren, when you are ready, so the floor is yours. Yes. Thanks, Israel. So basically, yeah, we are going to have a, a quick, uh, let's say, technical overview of what uh, complex event processing with the state and timers is. Um, we think this is a, a, a quite important thing to master when when working with, with Apache Bean, like uh, Israel and myself working with, with customers, we have seen so many customers that when, when doing uh, event processing in a streaming, they tend to, to, do, to mutate the state of, of the systems they are accessing in databases, et cetera, and their pipelines become completely, completely messy. You know? So to, I mean, because at the end of the day, you are running like different workers. Uh, each worker is doing uh, updates on the on the on the backend database that you might uh, guys might have, and uh, and uh, it's the source of lots of uh, headaches when when uh, working with with Apache Bean. Okay, so um, the the idea is that you grasp the concept with this introduction that we are going to to do and uh, then uh, apply it uh, doing the, the lab that uh, Israel has prepared, okay? So let's, uh, let's start by defining what, what uh, by, by the way, here are some instructions uh, for the lab that we are going to, to run later, okay? So you will have to, to have like a Python 3.10 installed in your, in your laptops, in your computers, uh, use whatever IDE you feel comfortable with for for uh, editing Python, like PyCharm or Visual Studio. Um, we have a repo, like uh, in in the repo, um, we have like uh, a couple of of branches. One is the the main branch um, that uh, kind of has like the skeleton of the pipeline that you are going to build in the in the lab, and then we have another branch that is the solution branch. And in the solution branch, you, I mean, in case you get a stack, you can pick uh, the solution and, and uh, continue, continue with the lab, okay? And then uh, obviously, uh, I mean, you, you will have to install the, the dependencies running that, that command, pip install minus r requirements.txt um, once you have cloned the, cloned the repo. And then um, we have some tests so we, we double check like that your pipeline, uh, you can run them with PyTest to double check that you are going the, the right way uh, when developing the, the pipeline. And uh, yeah, and the idea that, that you have a, a look at that file, uh, my pipeline, uh, pipeline.py and uh, start filling in the, the gaps once we explain to you what we are trying to achieve with this pipeline and that you have uh, all the learnings uh, from from uh, complex uh, state processing with uh, with state and timers, okay? Event processing with state and timers. Good. So let's uh, let's start by by giving a, a quick introduction of what uh, what the stateful stream processing is. Then we will see a few use cases where this is uh, kind of uh, applicable. We will uh, see what are the attributes that the, the state in, in Apache Bean has. Um, we will see the different types uh, of state that you can have uh, uh, when working with a, with a transform, okay? And then we will, we will uh, review a very common example uh, where uh, a stateful stream processing is is required and uh, define a bit what uh, what uh, timer is and how how they are used. And once we have uh, we have gone through all these topics, uh, Israel will will run the the lab and you will be coding together with him. Okay. 
So uh, let's uh, start by introducing what the stateful stream processing is. It's uh, like a, a kind of processing where as you are processing uh, the events that you are receiving, you are uh, computationally maintaining some, some kind of uh, contextual state, okay? And that can contextual state is going to be based on, on information that is uh, derived from the events that you have been seeing uh, going through the pipeline, okay? So what are common use cases uh, for this? So very common uh, doing when you are doing a pipeline for, for personalizing content for, for users, okay? So you, you have been processing like, for instance, the, the films or the videos they have, been, um, they have been watching, okay? And based on whatever you have been seeing that they have watched uh, maybe in a window of one week, you offer uh, recommendations to them, okay? Or another very common use case is uh, credit card uh, fraud detection, okay? So you see, you observe like the, the payments that are being made uh, maybe in a short period of time. And if they are all exceeding a certain uh, amount, uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can consider that, you can flag uh, um, that uh, transaction like the, as fraudulent, okay? Or for instance, uh, if you are uh, working in the logistics field and you are you are managing a supply chain and there are like uh, you are um, having some orders and there is a, a delays delays in the in the delivery of some some of the goods you can decide based on on that state that you are keeping to reroute, like uh, to choose another route for for uh, upcoming deliveries, okay? So it's just like, uh, as we said, uh, be observant of all the the information that you can derive for, from the events, past events you are getting and keeping uh, some kind of a state with that information um, inside your, your transform. And uh, and then uh, using it to to take decisions in your in your pipeline, okay. So when it comes to the properties uh, of the state itself, so um, the state, how do we store a state in a pipeline? Um, like uh, Apache Bean does not dictate it, okay. Uh, it's like the runner implementation that decides how you how state is being stored. For instance, if we are taking the, the direct runner, the, st the state is going to be stored in memory, but other other runners could, could choose uh, different implementations for state storage, okay? Then another thing, like the state uh, always remains local to the, to the being transformed, okay? The state uh, it's identified by by a name, and that name is going to be unique, okay, in the in the transform. Then um, the state can contain uh, a variety of, uh, I mean, can be of a variety of types, okay. So we could uh, we could store uh, scalars, we could store collections of data, maps, you know. And the last thing to to know about the state is that the state is always bound to a key and a, and a window, okay? So per, per key and window, we are going to have a, a state stored, it being like a scalar value, it being a collection, it being a map, okay? Good, so always remember these, uh, these properties about the state. So uh, in the specific case, uh, as we are going to do uh, the lab in, in Python, there are three types of, sorry, my slides uh, went mad. Okay, so there are three different types of uh, of a state that that you can have uh, in Python. Okay, you can have a read modify uh, write state that essentially it's like a, a scalar that you can uh, you can uh, update. Okay, uh, then uh, you can have a combining value state. So in this case, what you would be doing is uh, you would be uh, adding uh, 
So the state, you can add input values to the state and the, the state will have a combining, uh, a combining function, okay, that you will use to, to combine uh, all these values that you are passing, okay? We will see it in, a, in an example uh, in the upcoming slides, okay? And finally, you can have a, a back state that essentially a, a back is like a, a collection of, of values that, the, that you will keep as, as part of the, of the state, okay? So let's look at how, how each of them are, are going to be implemented in Python, okay? So you will have your, your do function and then you will declare your, your state. In this case, we are declaring a read modify write uh, state spec, okay? And then uh, uh, we are naming it. It's called uh, num underscore elements in this in this uh, case. And it's uh, like a scalar of, of, it's an int, okay? So we are passing like the, the code of there, okay? And then like uh, in the process, in the process function of your, of your, in the process function of your do, do function, what you are going to do, be doing is like uh, write the actual, the actual value, okay? So just simply state those right and write the, the actual value and you can keep it. That information, you will have it accessible uh, you, while you are processing that specific key and, and window. Obviously, I mean, to be able to use a state in your pipeline, you will have to have done like a, prior to running the, the transform that uses these two function, you will have had to do like a group by key, okay? Because uh, as we said, the, the state is uh, bound to a window and a key, okay? Then if we are using like a combined, a combined value state, um, as uh, similar to what we did before. We define, well, like we declare the, the, that type of, uh, of a state uh, in our do function, we name it. And in this case, we are going to pass like the, the function that we are going to use to combine. In this case, we are going to use like the, the sum function, okay? So basically uh, when I update the state, in this case, I add uh, like a new, a new value so it will do the sum of whatever I already had stored in the in the state plus this one that I am that I am passing. Okay, very very easy. And finally, the other type of state is going to be like a back state. Okay, so in this case, uh, you will have like a, a collection of elements, and you are uh, adding them uh, uh, like one by one and keeping them in in your in your state. Okay. So yeah, quite uh, quite simple. So let's look now at, at a very common uh, example where you are uh, when doing like a, a stream event processing, where you might need to to actually use a, a state. Okay. So imagine that we have a, like a pipeline that is processing some some elements, and per element that we are processing we need to somehow enrich that element with information that going, we are going to get from, a, from an external system, okay? So if I am going to process in a streaming, potentially I might uh, process millions and millions of, of uh, events, okay? And uh, if I um, make a call to the external system, element by element, uh, it is very likely that the actual performance of my pipeline is going to be terrible, you know, because I'm going to make so many calls to a, to an external system. And if there is some kind of quotas on that system, you know, they have some constraints, so you don't overuse or, or, or go beyond the fair usage of that, uh, of that service, it might be that, that even you blow up your quota, okay? So what, how can uh, like, uh, a stateful processing in Bing help you help you to to overcome this this problem that you might have. So very simple. One thing that I can do is uh, buffer uh, buffer as part of the the state the the elements that I am seeing. Okay. So I buffer I buffer them, and when I reach a a certain buffer size, I go and call 
the external system, uh, for instance, with the IDs of those uh, maybe 10 elements that I have been buffering, okay? So that way I am making like uh, the calls that I was going to make divided by 10, no? Because I am uh, clubbing together 10, 10 events, okay? And I am uh, doing the request to the external system for those, uh, for those uh, 10 e events, okay? So uh, in the state in this case, I could be using a, a back state as we saw before, and I could be keeping like the, the elements, uh, the elements in that back state, and I could be even have a like scalar that takes me, that tells me the count I am uh, at, and checks whether the, I have surpassed like that uh, threshold of ten elements that I have put. Okay, so this would be a, a, a common use case to to use uh, a stateful, uh, a stateful processing in a in an Apache Beam pipeline. Okay, but then. Uh, there can be a challenge in this in this case, okay? And this is going to give us uh, this challenge that I'm going to show, to talk about. Um, it's going to give us an introduction to to why uh, we would need uh, uh, timers to to solve it. So imagine that uh, I have a buffer. Uh, so I have a buffer size of ten, okay? And I have already buffered like uh, five elements. And for uh, for some reason, my pipeline is not receiving more more elements. Okay, there is uh, there is some kind of I don't know some kind of delay or the or the external system that is providing like the input for my pipeline is not sending more events. So those uh, those uh, events that are in the buffer, those five events are going to be stuck there. Okay, are going to be. Uh, uh, if I don't receive any new element, they are going to be stuck, and I'm, go I'm not going to be making the the call to the to the external system. Okay, so one thing uh, uh, I could do is to use to solve this problem is to use uh, timers. Okay, so in Apache Beam we have like uh, two type of uh, of timers. Okay, there are event time timers. Um, processing time timers, okay? Event time timers, uh, you will see that you will declare them in your in your do function. Uh, and the idea is that you get like a, a callback when the, when the watermark uh, reaches a certain threshold, okay? So imagine that uh, I reach the, the expiry time of the, of the window, okay? So I could trigger like a, a call, uh, so I could I could trigger the callback and do something uh, and do something in that uh, in that uh, uh, callback callback method, okay? And then the other type of timers are processing time timers, okay? So um, you can uh, uh, get a, a callback after a certain amount of time, like that you define with a with a duration has elapsed, okay? So for instance. In the case of the example that we were checking before, I could use an event time timer to say, look, if I have reached the if I, I have reached the, the end of the window, the, the window is expiring. So I go call back and then send whatever I have in the buffer. It being two elements, three elements, I, I don't necessarily have to, to reach the, the ten elements. Okay. So um, how do timers uh, work? Uh, the same way as with the state, you declare your timer uh, in your do function, you give it a name, and then you, you specify whether it's, if it is a, uh, let me show you, let me activate my pointer here. You specify the timer, uh, the type of timer it is. Uh, you will see that you have like event time timers where you say timer domain dot watermark, or you have the, the processing time uh, timers, where they uh, you <clears throat> the type is time domain dot real time, okay. And then, uh, what would you do here? Like uh, so, for instance, in this case, we have a state where we are buffering the the elements, right? So we we keep uh, buffering them, and then here we have the callback um, that you see. Uh, 
it's been annotated with the with the actual timer that I have declared. So um, I will get the the callback here, and I will proceed here to, for instance, send the events to the to so, sorry send the elements to the external system, uh, uh, and then I will, for instance, clear the clear the buffer I was keeping. Okay. For processing time, it is a slightly uh, a slightly different. I mean, you declare the the timer the same way. But then, when you when you set the timer, you actually would get the the current time and at the the duration that you want to that you want to <clears throat> uh, get the callback uh, after. Okay, and uh, similarly, you you annotate your callback method like uh, with the with the timer that you are using, and then uh, you will be called here, and then uh, potentially clear the, the state and send the, the events to the, the external system, okay? So these are, uh, this is a very common use case uh, on how to do like uh, a state, uh, a state uh, full processing for, for Apache bin, for Apache bin uh, pipelines, okay? So, yep. Uh, this is just the code, like uh, this is just some slides that I have included, so you so, so you have an idea of how it would look like now. So you will be doing the the callback, okay? Uh, once you get the the spidey, and as we said in the buffer, there could be way way less elements than than the actual buffer size, okay? And here, basically, you have just the uh, like the 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 actual code, okay, on how you would do the the example I was I was talking about. So now, for the for the lab that you guys are going to do with uh, with Israel, um, what better as you are all? I mean, not me, but you are in New York, so <laughs> we will be using uh, we will be using the the New York taxis. Uh, um events like the that uh, i mean this is a, a public pops up uh, pops up uh, topic that you could read the uh, taxi rights uh, and their information from but i think israel wants to do the example with with actual files instead of the pops up topic right yes yes it, it's gonna be it's gonna be files but so so everything can be running local but the, the same example could be applied to the data source in pops up because it's the same schema, and so we would have just to remove the file input and just put the pub sub input, and, and the format is the same, it's JSON encoded data. Yep. So yeah, I'll hand it over to you, Israel. Yes. So you. So maybe so if you, you can keep sharing and move to the next slide, the uh, meeting. Ah, yes. One sec. So. One second, yes. Yeah. So mm. these are how the the uh, input messages will look like for you. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. Please, Israel. Yeah, so just sorry. I mean, we'll, so from all the data that we have here, we are going to be using only three fields, okay? For, for those of you that were in the streaming workshop uh, right before this one, so it's the same data, okay? Same files, everything is the same. Um, we are gonna, we are going to use it in a different way, okay? So we are going to be trying to calculate sessions again, but not using temporal properties. We are going to be using the right status field, and when we detect a drop off, so we consider that the session is closed, okay? And then we are going to be also using the timestamps because we are going to be calculating properties of the sessions and then on top of those properties, complex event processing, like for instance, give me all the sessions that are longer than 30 minutes, whatever. And for that, so we need the timestamps, okay? So we need to be able to, to calculate some properties based on the timestamps. We need to be able to sort the data based on the timestamps. And if you move to the next one, uh, Miren. Yes. So this is, for instance, uh, the, the, the output. This is going to be the, the output of the pipeline, one example of the output, OK? So we are going to have a write ID and a start time and end time, start and end status, the uh, status, uh, the duration, and the number of points. Same as in the streaming workshop, but now we are going to have a reason for the uh, close of the session. 
if you remember in, in streaming you had the uh, timers uh, you had triggers sorry not timers you had triggers and you could have early triggers on time triggers late triggers so here we are going to be waiting until we see a drop off and then if we see the drop off everything is good we just have a session but sometimes data will be lost and we will be losing the drop off and we cannot keep waiting forever so we will also use a timer not to wait forever and then there will be a different reason for the session uh, to be closed okay so if for whatever reason we never saw the drop of a the drop of a message okay so and now if you move to the next one i'm leave it there for a while because okay so here is the the detail so here is they say github repo okay so um, please clone it it's the same one that i made and shared at the beginning okay um, uh, make sure that you install the dependencies um, use your favorite editor the same one that you have used before if you want okay so to, today we are gonna have just a single test and you can run it with pytest that should be installed if you do the pip install requirement um, and then uh, well so let's let's then we will start with the with the with the workshop so before we switch over to the code in like do you have any questions so about the what the Miriam just presented so questions before we switch over to the practical side of the workshop no, doesn't look like we have a lot of questions so Miriam then I'm gonna be presenting myself I'm gonna take over the presenter okay okay sorry should, should repeat that yeah okay that's okay so the timers yeah so timers is the external data uh, um, uh, external so there, there's a question here in the in the room so timers it's a or the time of the timers it's a it's external data um, when you define a timer so you have to apply some criteria let's say that criteria is static external is something that you have to put in the code it cannot depend on the data like i'm gonna wait for 30 seconds whatever so so in that sense it's external it's not, in the data. it's not in the data but if you want it to be in the data so you can also use you can use the watermark uh, timers okay so and then it can depend on the time stamp of the messages okay so normally for the kind of things that we are going to be doing in state and timers i would say the most frequent thing is using processing time timers because you need you want to have predictability so windows are super powerful as we have seen that the problem is that because things depend on the data like for instance the watermark it may be difficult to predict what's going on or what's gonna be happening okay so that's why you all, we also added the window the pane and all that so to, to be able to diagnose what's going on with a state and timers so we can have much more control it's a little bit lower level api but we have much more control on how things are gonna be and then it's a uh, more predictable let's say but maybe maybe when we switch over to the to the example so this will make a little bit more more sense one one second israel yes i wanted to show them uh, maybe an example that is uh, easy to understand okay uh, about what you can do, for instance, if, as Israel said, if you are doing uh, um, processing time uh, timer, let's say, you just set up the duration. But if you are doing event uh, event time uh, timer, um, what I was saying before is that you can that you can, for instance, set up a, a expiry on the on the value of the when the when the window is expiring. Okay. So there is a, an example here, okay? So for instance, you would do it like this. You define your, this is in Java, let me change it to Python. But you will, de, will, you will define your, your timer and then you could actually set the timer value to be the window end plus the allow late, late, lateness of the, of the window, okay? So then that timer will expire when you have gone beyond the, the allow lateness that you that you have uh, for your window, okay? So that's how you would be updating it. See, okay, good. So, so this is the repo. Just uh, put it in here. Uh, just one sec uh, more, in case uh, you, you haven't cloned it yet. So clone it, and then uh, have a look at the two branches that we have. There is a main branch, and there is a solution branch. 
Again, the main branch in this case have all the gaps that we need to fill, and that's going to be the purpose of the rest of this workshop. Uh, and we have a, 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 the unit test to make sure that we have finished uh, successfully the task. While the test is failing, we have to keep uh, doing stuff. And the solution yeah. one, well, it has all the details, okay? So uh, the full yeah. details and the solution. So uh, I'm hearing some noises, I'm not sure. I think it's me uh, from the other side. So if, um, uh, please don't look at the solution unless you are desperate, okay? So again, mm, solutions are poison for the learning process, okay? So uh, wait until the end uh, to, to, to look at the solutions. Uh, try to make the examples from scratch, okay? So that's, uh, that would be my recommendation. So um, you need to use Python 3.10 or any modern Python, not mm, more modern than 3.11. And you need to install the requirements. The instructions are given here in the in the in the in in, in the README. I'm not gonna do that. I have already done that. Okay. So if you haven't done that, so please follow the instruction. Create a virtual M. If you want, you may use the same virtual M that uh, you were using before, but just install additional dependencies because the dependencies are slightly different. Okay. Whatever you choose. Well, so make sure that you have something running. In this case, I'm gonna be using PyCharm. Because I like it more than uh, VS Code, uh, so in, uh, Anthony was using it, uh, but uh, I prefer to use PyCharm. And then the structure is the same as we saw in the previous workshop. But there's this file here, pipeline.pi, uh, okay? And there's more files, but we're uh, we gonna ignore them, okay? So I'm gonna be opening this file, and I'm gonna be removing this panel now in a bit, okay? So this is the file we're gonna be editing, pipeline.py inside my pipeline, okay? In the main branch, all right? So let me close the panel and focus on this code, okay? So you will see that in some parts, okay? So we will now start, so we'll go in, let's say, line after line to, feel, to see all the structure, but you will see that there are some to-dos in some places. This is what we have to do, okay? Um, that wasn't a surprise, right? And if you do PyTest here, the test will fail right now. Okay, so see, one fail with some uh, output. Good, okay, so, well, so uh, we don't want the, the, the test to fail, so we need to do all these tasks in order for the, fail to, uh, to the, for the test uh, to succeed. So let's, let's, go, let's go around in this file. It's very similar to the example that we've seen before, if you have been around before. So at the bottom of the, pi of the file, we have this run function that defines a pipeline, okay? And then inside this pipeline, uh, we have this transform that is the one that we're gonna have to to change okay or inside that that transform and then we we are reading the data from a file as json data and then we will transform it into sessions somehow okay so here we are using a class that is taxi session i will show you about the, this class in a bit and then well we will write the output that is required in order for for the test to to check that everything is uh, it's fine, okay? So let's go at the beginning of the, of the pipeline, uh, uh, the beginning of the file, sorry. You see some imports that are unused because we haven't written the solution yet, so don't remove them because we are gonna need them later, okay? They are gonna come handy. So we are using the same class taxi point as before, but we are adding two more classes, okay, today. So we are adding this session reason and enum, okay? Because, uh, well, so because it just, um, uh, it's more readable, uh, the code, and the, the, the taxi session, okay? Where we have the, the ID, the duration, the end, uh, the start and end timestamps, and so on, same as before, but now we are gonna be calculating all this in an entirely different way, okay? In a streaming as well, uh, well, with this file in this case, but this would work in the same way in streaming, but using a state and timers, okay? So um, let, me, let me keep going through, through the file, and in line 78, there are some functions that I have already written for us, okay? Because I don't want to waste time on parsing JSON and all this, okay? So there is this uh, function here to uh, parse JSON, there is this one to add the time stamp, there is a combiner for the max time stamp. We will see more on this. What is this about? So we will see later, okay? So we, we are gonna keep uh, track of the time stamps that we have seen in a state variable, okay? So more on this later. So um, I'm gonna skip this. So this is the dofn that we need to write, okay? Uh, there's some code already written for us, like this, the state variables. 
but then everything else is empty. Okay, so I'm gonna skip it now, and I'm gonna go straight to the transform that I want to use. We have had a discussion uh, before about the return, yield, p transforms, do offense. Today I'm here using a different style for the same thing that we have seen in the previous workshop, okay? So instead of using classes and overriding classes or uh, inheriting from classes, I'm using this annotation here. This annotation here, bp transform dot fn, allows me to use a function, a Python function, as a p transform. Why I'm doing this? Because I want to show you different ways of doing the same stuff. This is probably more Pythonic than inheriting from the class, overriding a method. That sounds a lot more like Java. Uh, it's not surprising. Apache Bean started as a Java framework. And it was later on translated, so to speak, into Python. There are bits that are a little bit Java-like that I don't entirely like. I like Python a little bit better. Okay. But I do Java for a living. Um, so here we have a function that uh, receives as input a p collection of strings, the JSON strings, and we'll have to return another p collection of taxi sessions. Um, the type annotations are totally optional. This is Python after all, so they are optional in Python. I'm adding them because they help me to know what I have to do, okay? Maybe it will help you uh, too, okay? But they are totally optional. You will see lots of types of annotations, but it's for me because, I mean, bear with me, guys. I have to go here and write code in front of an audience. They are recording me and all that, so the, 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 the more tips I have about what I have to do, the better. So, or, or, or I, will, I will just, let's say, my, my, my mind will be blank and I will not know what to do. Okay, um, I'm becoming nervous now <laughs> even as, as I'm saying it. Um, so another thing different here, for instance, we are noticing part do and do fn. We are seeing a map with a, uh, with a function, okay? If the function is simple, you can do this. Uh, for instance, one of the functions that we did before, it had the constructors and stuff, well, you cannot use a map then, okay? So you have to use a do fn. But most of the time, you are fine with this, okay? The with keys, I just put it here, okay? So it's the same case, case as before, okay? So we need to add a key because and this is important now, so I'm kind of kidding, but now important bit. A state and timer, it's a type of DoFN, it's called a stateful DoFN, that can only be applied to data that is uh, key values, okay? In, case, in the case of Python, it's tuple with two elements, okay? So we need to add the keys or we will not be able to apply state and timers because as Miren said, a state is always local to each one of the keys. So here is what we're gonna be doing, the, the state and timers. And then once we have calculated this with uh, state and timers or with windows, so we can do any kind of complex event processing. So complex event processing is normally understood in, over strings, is normally understood about on applying patterns on data, okay? Uh, that comes in a string. So I think state and timers is very handy for this because you are gonna be receiving data, you can sort it and you can keep reacting to data as it comes, okay? So you have much more predictability than with Windows. So it's, it's a much better mm, better fit for, for complex event processing when you need to do things like this, okay? Like for instance, finding sessions with that uh, takes take more than one hour, all right? Uh, Apache Bean doesn't have an API for complex event processing, but this, this is a pattern that we could uh, that we could apply always anytime that we need to do any kind of pattern matching over strings, okay? So you prepare the string with a stateful DoFN and then keep using primitives of Apache Bean to do the complex event processing, okay? Like grouping, filtering, whatever, okay? Uh, or matching specific types of strings. So any questions so far? So I'm gonna move to this uh, do fn, okay? So see, I, I use here map, I use here pardo because now this is a complex uh, f lambda, like a, it's, not, it's not a simple lambda, so I have to use pardo. So I'm gonna go up, and here it is, okay? So as much as I like using the annotations and lambdas and all that, so here we cannot use that, okay? So we cannot avoid uh, having to inherit from do fn. So this is the DoFN that we're gonna be writing. So as member variables of the class, I have all the state, uh, all the state um, um, variables. And we have uh, one uh, timer and three states. We're gonna keep track of the key that we are processing. We will see later why we need this. 
we are gonna keep track of all the elements that we are seeing so far, okay? And these are gonna be taxi points, and we're gonna add them in a bag, okay? So this is gonna be an, an unsorted uh, data structure that is gonna keep all the points that have the same key, because remember, stateful defense are on a per key basis. We need a timer, okay? Why is this? Because what we are gonna be doing here is calculating sessions, but not based on time. We are gonna base on the properties of the data. Whenever we see a drop-off, we consider that the session is closed. But what if we never see it? This is a streaming. A streaming is unforgiving. Things will happen. You cannot trust on the quality or completeness of, uh, completeness of the data. If you're working in BAS and you have a data quality report for your input and all that, so you can trust on that and make assumptions based on that. In a streaming, no. In a streaming, you have to be prepared for the worst, okay? so. What if we don't see the drop off? So we need to we need to do that. We cannot keep holding a state forever. If for one key, for one taxi, we never see the drop off, I don't know, like the taxi crash. We're never, so we cannot keep a state forever. And if we don't do anything with a timer, we will literally keep that state forever. And if we're running in data flow in streaming, for instance, or in Flink, or wherever, that will be memory somewhere in some worker that is actually being used and never release, okay? Because we are never closing that session and it's gonna be kind of an infinite session. So it's wasted resources. And for the timer, so we, win we want to know what's the maximum time stamp that we have used, okay? So we're gonna be actually using a processing time, I think, uh, with, no, we're gonna use event time, okay? So for that, we're gonna keep track of the time stamps of the messages. And I'm gonna use in here, I'm gonna be using here a combiner because uh, my data is gonna come out of order, okay? And uh, I cannot make a timer go backwards. So this is very important in state and timers as well, okay? So whenever I set this timer, it has to be to something that is n in the same time that was set before or after. If I try to go backwards, that will be an error. My problem will have an error, okay? So that I, I keep track of the maximum time stamp. Remember this function that was a little bit above? I keep track of this in order to make sure that I never go backwards in my timer, okay? This is kind of like a pr protection. This is important also when you're using timers in, in a stateful defense, okay? You never go backwards, okay? Remember, streaming is unforgiving. No, my data will always grow the time stamp because I know because it's coming and then you receive a date like one message with a time stamp in 1970, okay? These things happen, okay? You don't want to try to go backwards because then your pipeline will fail, okay? so. You have to be, you have to be defensive, okay? So you have to be always with this mindset of uh, being defensive and when you're working in a stream. Any questions so far? So, so this is a decision I have made for you. It's gonna be the last one, I promise, okay? So the first decision you have to do when you're making a stateful defense is which state uh, variables I use and which timers, okay? Like Miren, like, uh, in the examples that she, she, she shared, okay? So this is a different use case, so it's different state variables, but you have to, you have to, to make that decision. How many variables can I have? You, you, may have? you may have that question. How many variables can I have in my DFN? So I'm gonna talk here about data flow. This is all runner dependent, okay? But the, the same applies probably to Flink, Spark, and others. The number of variables could be virtually infinite, okay? So each one of these variables is gonna be a, a stored somewhere as a state. In Flink, this is a store in RockDB. In Dataflow, this is a story in Bigtable. And don't worry about RockDB or Bigtable. This is totally transparent for you, okay? So you're gonna only be interacting with variables. This is about the backend, how it works, okay? So you don't have to connect to a database or anything like that. So the number of rows that you're gonna be using, so it's the number, so like each one of these uh, variables is gonna use either a row or maybe one cell, okay? So you can have literally probably infinite number of uh, state variables. Well, some limit, but a very large limit, okay? What is limiting here is the size inside each one of the variables. Like for instance, the number of elements inside that bag. That's a limiting factor, okay? We have one row or one cell, depending on the type of database, per key, okay? So the number of keys doesn't matter, but the size of each one of the keys is important, okay? If it's very large, maybe we'll, we reach the limits of the database that has been used by the backend, or in any case, it will be very slow because this is gonna be processed in one single worker, like the full state, okay? Uh, sequentially, we are gonna get a list of events that we're gonna process somehow, and that's gonna be totally sequential, okay? For instance, in data flow with Bigtable, 
the maximum size of this bag could be 100 megabytes. 100 megabytes is a lot, okay? So the 100 megabytes for a single key, eh? for, for a single ride of a taxi, okay? So, so it should, I don't know, like it, ha it has to be around the world several times to, to reach that limit, okay? But bear this in mind when you are designing your state variable, okay? Because if this is over 100, it may fail, or even if it's, I don't know, if it's 50 megabytes, uh, it, it will be terribly slow, okay? So your pipeline. And in, in streaming, performance is important. You are, wor you are working on streaming for, for something, no? So you will be doing bad uh, uh, otherwise, no? Okay. Questions so far? So let's start writing some code. So the process method I have already also written here this for you. So the process method, it's very important, it's mandatory, that every state variable that is defined above is also uh, referenced here as a parameter for the process, uh, for the process function, okay? So we are getting here uh, the element. We, we already saw that we added some keys. Uh, we already saw that it's a taxi point. So this is a tuple, nothing new. We are going to get in the TAN stamp, OK? So this is a special parameter. You have seen this in the examples of uh, Miriam before as well, OK? So we are going to visit the TAN stamp because of the timer, OK? Remember, so we can never go backwards. And then we have different state variables here. We have the key state, which just uh, it's going to hold one string. Uh, the bag, it's going to uh, hold all the points that we have seen so far. Uh, the maximum time stamp, this is actually a long number, like a in long integer. Uh, this is going to be a number. And then the timer. And again, uh, the type annotations are totally, uh, totally optional. But here I annotated this. OK, so the process method of a DFN always expects Okay, let me repeat it for, for the recording. So each rod will have different length. Uh, you mean in this uh, in this one, in this state variable? Yeah. yeah, it may have different sizes, yes. Each it, state variable will have different sizes. Yes, totally, yes. It, well, that, that's a back-end detail, okay? It will go into the database somehow, okay? And then there, there will be different sizes, and, and the runner has to handle that, okay, somehow. So, but let's say we don't worry about that. So, uh, we, we shouldn't worry about that. Just bear in mind that there's a vertical limit, okay, so to speak. There's no horizontal limit in the number of uh, of uh, keys that you can process, but the, there's a vertical limit uh, in the state and timers always, okay? All right. Um, so, I don't remember what I was saying. Ah, types, yes. So, here, remember that the process method of EduFN has always to return an iterable. And this is what we are going to be returning. returning. For that, we will have to use the yield uh, command here, or we will have to use a return of a list or uh, any other trick. But it has to be an iterable. OK, so let me try to do that. Let me put the mic here. Like it's, a, <laughs> it's a clip mic. Does it work? Yes, OK. So well, let me, let me remove this, this pass here. Um, let me actually keep the comments, because they, otherwise I will not remember what I have to do. Normally, the first thing when you are re receiving data is updating the state with that, OK? So we are receiving here a tuple. And the tuple will be a key and a point in the elements, OK? So the key will be a string. The point will be a taxi point, because that's the type definition that is above, OK? And then, well, I'm going to be using the key state to remember which key I'm processing, because when I'm going to meet the session, I'm going to need that information uh, for, for the taxi sessions object, OK? so. I'm going to take the key state, and I'm going to write the key, OK? I could be a little bit smarter than this, OK? So rem this, what is happening he right now here is the runner is going to the back end, is writing a row in the database, blah, blah, in whatever database is using, and so on. So this is a kind of expensive operation. So I could check the state variable, see if it has already been initialized, and if it has been initialized, forget about in writing it, OK? Um, uh, because the, when once I initialize it, it will be cached in the local worker, OK? And then I, I can avoid writes, OK? But I'm lazy, I'm not going to do that. But bear in mind that depending on how you interact with the state, it, you may actually hammer the runner, OK? This is not going to be too much. It's a small string, so this, well, I can afford it. 
No, it doesn't cache the, so, um, no. It doesn't know that it has already written something that is the same as before, okay? But if I could do something like this, okay? For instance, it does it like this, right? Remove redundant parentheses, yes, too much Java in my life. So, yes, okay, so um, I could do something like this, okay, well, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna leave it like this. This, this would be a little bit smarter because I wouldn't be writing every single time, okay? And I'm not even checking the value of the key state, why? Who tells me why? If there's something I write, why? This is important. So I'm, I'm not checking what is inside here. If there's something, it, well, if there's nothing, I write, okay? But if there's something, I ignore it. I don't write anything. But I don't even look at what is inside that state because it's per key, okay? So the runner is granting that this operation will happen on a per key basis, okay? If this is known, it means that I have never seen that key. Okay. And if it's not known, it means that I have already seen that key, so therefore this has to be that, okay? This is another way of, well, shaving a little bit of a, of a code, okay? So the key will be unique, okay? So the runner guarantees me that it's per key, but I cannot know the key unless I keep it, okay? So uh, I cannot know the, the value of the key. Okay, more, more state um, update, okay? Key stake, uh, taxi ride events uh, back, okay? Well, I'm gonna add uh, the element, and I will do with something with this later. Um, let me actually put this here because this is what I'm doing first: updating more, more, more state variables. Max time stamp sind. Okay. Well, I have to add uh, the element time stamp. Let me. I'm gonna check here. I have. Um, I have the solution here in front of me. So just um, actually, I'm cheating, I know. But just let me, ah, yes, I, I knew I was forgetting something. Micros, okay, so because I want, uh, I want a long, okay? A long, uh, long the integer. Uh, anything else I have to do? Uh, any other state variable that I have to update? What do you think? Nobody says anything, so no. Nothing else, okay? There's a timer that I should, I should somehow do something with it, okay? But so far, uh, I have already updated all the state variables. Now I have to do something, okay? So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna check if I have seen the drop off. So for, for that, I'm gonna use the point, this, okay? This has a right status, so I'm gonna check that. If I have seen that, I emit the session. If I haven't, well, I have to keep waiting. And for waiting, what do I use? The timer, okay? So. The point, which is a taxi point, has a, this right status, okay? This right status variable, and if this is a drop off, the session should finish. Let me, I will do something here later, okay? If not, well, if not, keep waiting, it's actually here, okay? If not, keep waiting. Let's do the keep waiting part first. How do I keep waiting? Well, I have to update the timer uh, to some time in the future, okay? So let me have here the, like the cheat sheet. Uh, so for that, I need to check what's the maximum time stamp that I have seen so far, okay? Max uh, time stamp, it's the max time stamp seen. Okay, and I have to read this state. So that's, this is how I read it, okay? Remember that I have already add something here, okay? So I could, I, I, I add something here. Uh, when I add something here, because I'm using the combiner, it only keeps the maximum value seen so far. This is what this makes, okay? And this is granted because this is a combiner, okay? And then here, when I read it, I get this uh, long, um, check, it, check it here, sorry, check it here. And I want to use here like a, um, um, a time in seconds because the timer, I have to, well, I have to do operations in seconds. So I'm gonna transform this into a time stamp. Okay. 
and I'm gonna, uh, there's a method here, a uh, second, ah, here this is autocomplete, great, okay? So this is what I'm gonna be doing. So this is the maximum time stamp that I have seen so far, okay? And now, well, I have to do some expiration time. And for this, well, I'm gonna use the maximum time stamp that I have seen, which is seconds, and this is gonna be actually an integer, okay? Expiration seconds, let me put it like this. Okay, let me put here also the type. Uh, maximum plus some time. Okay, well, how, how much time? Well, I don't know. Uh, we were using eight minutes before, no? For uh, for late data, no? so to speak, no? So the sessions were closed, we can use uh, eight minutes. Eight minutes, it's 480 seconds. Okay, or well, or eight, eight minutes. 60 multiplied by eight, whatever, okay? And now I set the timer. Wh which value should I use here? Whatever, okay? So so how long do you want to wait for the drop off to show up? Okay, so this is what you have to do. Uh, this is the decision you have to make. Uh, data is gonna come out, out of order and you have to wait. The longer you wait, the longer you will have to wait to see some sessions, sometimes, okay? The delay will be larger. But the more likely it is that if the drop off is late, you will see it and then you will have like a proper session, not just a session that is, let's say, garbage collected because you don't want to wait anymore. And now you have to um, to have the, to set the timer, okay? So the set, to set the timer, sorry, it's GC, GC timer, garbage collection timer, don't wait forever with a state around, okay? So clean from uh, time to time, and we have to set it to some value, okay? And then we have to take, Okay, so here this expiration seconds, this is actually seconds from the beginning of time in in uh, in, um, in Python. So here we can use this time stamp seconds equal to expiration seconds, okay? And then this is the expiration time stamp that we can use in the pipeline, okay? Now we have, well, we are waiting a little bit longer, okay? So what happens if we see the drop off? Are we gonna wait for this timer to, to finish? No, the moment we see the drop off, we do something here, we emit the session, we make sure we clear the timer and we clear all the state and then we are gone and move, we can move to the next session, okay? But if we never see it, so this will call a callback that we have to write later, we haven't written that uh, yet, okay? And then that callback will clean everything out and will emit the session when we don't see the drop off, okay? So let's, let's have a look at here the drop off. If you It, well, maybe this is not a sensible value. You are totally right, okay? This in New York, eight minutes, it's kind of, yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, it could be maybe eight hours, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding, eh, no kidding. So I have had customers that put here a year eh, because they are so scared of losing data that they don't care about holding a state in a pipeline for a year as long as they, this makes uh, sure that if they see a message, uh, uh, they, they are gonna process it, okay? So yeah, but it really doesn't matter to, let's use actually this value here because otherwise the test is not probably, maybe the results will be slightly different and the tests are gonna, are gonna change. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, but, but that has to be, let's say, a sensible decision, not just a made up decision. Okay, so session should finish. If I go down in this DFN, uh, here is the callback that we have to write later, and there's this method here that calculates and emits a session, okay? So we're gonna use it, and for this, we just need to pass the bug and a session reason, okay? So let's use this, okay? So, and then we will worry later about how to write that, okay? So the session will be a self a generate a calculate session with the key. Well, so I'm gonna read, uh, well, the key is actually the, the, the element that we have uh, here, the key. Uh, the events back, so this is the taxi rides event back, read, okay, and a session reason. Well, so if we are here, it's because we have seen the drop off, okay? And then we, we, this is how we are gonna emit the session, and then now we have to yield the session. Using yield, the, the advantage is that this is not gonna finish the process method here, and we can do other stuff, okay? Which other stuff we, we can do? Well, so now that we have yield the session, so we make sure that to clear the state, okay? We clear this, we need to clear all the state, okay? We are done, we have calculated the session, so we don't need any this any, anymore, okay? So clear the state here. Um, 
where is the maximum time stamp scene also clear and the GC timer. This thing that I'm doing is extremely important, okay? This is what is gonna make your pipeline perform and use constant resources or use resources that, that let's say match the demand, okay? If you don't use this, your pipeline will use increasing resources over time, okay? Like your account manager in Google Cloud, if you're in Google Cloud, will be, be very happy about that, okay? But your CFO will not be so happy, okay? Because basically every day you will be spending more and more money per minute, okay? And this can really increase to a lot after months. Eh? So um, this sounds silly, but the, I make out a living. Uh, I make a living out of uh, fixing these kind of issues with customers. Okay. So if you don't clear the state, you may spend a lot of money because the pipeline is gonna do what you are telling it. Okay. Keep that state. Okay. So make sure that when you are done, you always clear the state. Um, also, depending on how you are using the state, like and here we're gonna be lazy and we're gonna be instantiated in memory, the full state, you may also at some point run out of memory, okay? You don't have to instantiate all the state in memory at once. Uh, the, the fact that the state is larger than the available memory will not make your pipeline fail in Flink, in Dataflow, and probably all the runners of Apache Bean, but uh, depending on how you deal with it, you may exhaust the memory, okay? If you assume that it's small enough so you can instantiate it in memory at once, you may actually exhaust the memory, okay? So that can be also a problem with the, with the, with, with a very large state that is never clear, okay? Okay, good. Almost there. So we have written the process method, great. But uh, if I run the test, it's gonna keep failing, okay? So let me see. It's still failing, okay, well, we, we, ha we haven't written the calculate sessions method actually, so we're not doing anything, okay? It's, this is gonna be an empty object, so this is normal, okay? But this is the, the typical logic in a state and timer. This is the main branch, okay? The happy path of our stateful defense. Let's go for the unhappy path, the timer, okay? So for the timer, so we have to define a method. The name of the method could be anything, but we need to annotate it with this on timer and the timer spec variable that we defined it at the beginning. And then the timer is a method of this class and as input, we have to put all the state variables and the timers and, the, well, not the timer, uh, other timers if we had more than one timer too, uh, but here we only have one timer, not, not the timer itself, so the, 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 this is the callback for that timer, but all the state variables here, okay? So we have three, the key, the back, and the timestamp. Okay, even if we're not gonna use it, so we need to declare it here because it's gonna be, when, when mm, the runner calls the callback, it's gonna pass all the state variables and if the method doesn't match, it's gonna fail. And then the output is again an iterable. This is kind of like a process method, okay, also, but it doesn't get the element because there is no element, there's only a timer. So what do we have to, he, to do here? The same thing, okay, so I have a session, I have this method here, calculate session, Mm, the key, in the process method I had the key variable, right? Because I was reading the element. I don't have it here, okay? That's why I have to keep the, 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 the key in a state, okay? To be able to use it here, okay? So I just take here the key state and read. Mm, next, the, like the elements, well, so it's here, the, this back uh, read. Uh, the tiny stamp, and is, and then isn't that, no, well, so I, I'm gonna ignore it. And here I have to use a session reason, and it's garbage collection, okay? We haven't seen the drop off, okay? Shit happens, we are in a streaming, okay? And uh, given enough time, you are gonna see all kinds of situations. So we better prepare for them, so we're preparing here for them. Okay, now we yield the session, session, and we repeat. So we clear all the state, okay? Key state clear, it's uh, so not class, sorry, clear. Clear. And the max time stamp scene, because I'm not gonna use it anymore. Do I have to clear everything always when I when, when I have a timer callback? Not, not always, okay? When I'm done, when I'm considering I'm done. I may have more than one timer, like in the examples that were shown by Miren, I will have all kinds of situations, okay? So, um, 
uh, depending on what I'm doing, so I will need to clear the state at some point or another, okay? So this is all, we need to think about this when, we, when we're designing the, the stateful defense. In this case, I'm done here. Uh, if this happens, I don't want to wait anymore, I don't want this data around for anything else, I just clear it and I move on. What happens if I get the drop off after a while? after this timer uh, has uh, uh, been triggered. What, what would happen in that case? What do you think it would happen? Anyone? I have cleared the key state, I have cleared everything, and I get a message with the same key and the drop off now, like one hour later. What would happen with this algorithm that is implemented here? Yes. It would be a brand new session with just one element with the drop off, okay? It would be like a mini session, okay? So the time that I have defined for the trigger it matters, okay? So that's why we have to put a sensible number there because if we put it too short, we will have fragmentations of sessions because well, this is what this is what I'm putting here, okay? So it's always a trade-off between between waiting for too long, holding up a state until this is triggered, and risking emitting fragmented sessions. Same as with uh, session windowing, by the way. So it's the same. It's always, in streaming, it's always about this, okay? This is also important because, um, like, customers are really stubborn, okay? So it's, uh, uh, I enjoy a lot working with customers, and I hate it at the same time, okay? So lots of times when customers go to state and timers, it's because they, want, they don't want to deal with time in streaming. No, no, look, look, look. I don't care about time, okay? Whenever I see this type of message, I start my session. Whenever I see this last message, I stop my session, and that's it, okay? And I keep moving, okay? And then you, my work is starting to make questions, like, what if you are missing those messages? And they will, they will tell you, no, no, that's not going to happen. It's like, I, I will invite you to a one-star or two-star or three-star Michelin restaurant if that never happens in the time of a year, okay? So you mean, it's going to happen always, okay? So even if you want to escape the course of having to deal with time in a streaming, you cannot. It's a streaming. It's all about time, okay? So you always have to think about this, about having a timer, okay? And the timer is going to define the quality of your output. And the timer is going to define the performance of your output, the latest that you have to wait. You need to deal with, timer, with time. You, you cannot avoid that, okay? That's the course of a streaming. You have to deal with time always okay even if you don't want even if you have a nice algorithm defining how to group things in the, how to do apply complex event processing how to group uh, a string in different groups to apply some processing that is totally not based on time even in that there's always a fallback for for a timer okay because your data is going to be sometimes incomplete okay so remember this State and timers are very handy when you don't want to deal with time, but still you have to deal with time. That's why it's a state and timers. It's not just a state, okay? Who decides the timer? Hmm. You. You, and you have to make a sensible decision. Again, it's coming back to the, to the limit that we, we have put uh, of eight minutes, okay? If I don't know about the business, that I clearly don't, okay, because I have chosen eight minutes here in New York, okay, then you may choose a value that is not right, okay. So this is something that has to be decided by the same person that decided how the data is going to group be grouped together. It's someone that knows the data and knows the business problem, so to speak. <laughs> okay, so Miren, what, do, what are you saying? Let me see. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you, we hear you. Ah, okay, I was going to ask, in this particular pipeline, you are using a global window, right? You are not windowing. Yes, the, the I'm using a global window because I don't want to deal with windows, but I could also yes. use windows, yes. Uh, I, I just have uh, like a, a question. If we were using a window, like uh, in the, when, if you can go back to where you were setting the timer in the, yeah. It, it would not make sense to set the timer beyond the end of the window, right? Very good because comment. It wouldn't make sense. You are right. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't no, make I, sense. I just, I, I just wanted to make to make that point because yes. uh, this example can be misleading, you know, because we are yes, using yes, a yes. window. Yes, you are totally yeah, that, that you are totally right. Um, so one thing that I'm doing here, and I haven't mentioned that, is not dealing with windows. Okay. You can always apply state and timers in the context of a window. And then when the window expires, 
your state also expires, okay? So it doesn't make sense to put the timer beyond the boundary of the window because that timer is going, it's never going to be called, okay? But, um, but when that happens, when, when the time, when the window expires, the callback is gonna be called. Not with this value, but with a different value of the timer, okay? So the callback is still gonna be called. So if you combine windows with a state and timers, you are more protected towards the ever-growing state, okay? Because basically when the window expires, expires then the, the, everything's clear, okay? Um, so normally, the most of these cases that I see is when people use state and timers, they don't want to use windows, okay? It's more like either one thing or the other, okay? I want to, to group my data based on temporal properties, or I want to group my data in based on any other property, uh, based on their data itself, and I don't want to be messing with windows because I, I cannot predict when I'm gonna see something, okay? So, and then, well, so, and then you use state and timers without windows, with a global window, there's always a window actually, uh, even in batch, it's called a global window, it's an infinite window, and then you have here the risk of a, of a, of a ever-growing state, okay? So yes, so bear that in mind. If you are using window win, like this limit here should never, be beyond the boundary of the window, it wouldn't make a lot of sense, okay? But I don't want to complicate a lot of things, like things a lot here. I want to I want to deal with the most common case that I find, let's say, with our customers, okay? When they rely on state and timers, it's normally because they have some kind of windowing, grouping in a streaming, that has to be done based on event time, but not based on temporal properties, based on other properties, like seeing a type of message. Okay, so moving on, let me remove this here because this is done, and this is the timer done. Okay, let me let me run the test. We're almost done here. Let me, let me run the test. It should be still failing. It's still failing, okay, not surprising because, well, we have left the most complex part to the end, okay? Everything that we have written so far is kind of boilerplate, dealing with the state, dealing with timers, and so on and so on, okay? So this is where the logic is, okay? So here we want to calculate the session. We want to get this as input, and we want to calculate a, tax, a taxi session, okay? So let's try to do that, okay? So uh, let me do this here, okay? So a taxi session, let me call, call it like this, okay? I will have to pass here some arguments, like a write ID, okay? Well, the write ID, it's easy, this is the key, okay? Then I will have to do a mean, uh, let me see, let, let me actually copy paste from here, it gives me one sec. Let me copy paste all these fields. Okay. And then this is a float. And this is a, a, a string, okay. This is another string. Uh, this is a point. This is a string. equal another string and then this what is actually the session reason that is passed here as input okay okay so why uh, session reason is equal to session reason now okay and then I return this now I have to calculate everything that is here in the middle okay so, which is, it's similar to what we did before, okay? We could actually use the same code uh, as before. Well, so I have here this taxi write events uh, back, and this is, um, I can read this, and this this is gonna um, give me an iterable, okay? And I can actually transform it into a list, okay? And then uh, this is gonna be some points, okay? Now, I want to find the init timestamp and the end timestamp, and the number of points. Well, the number of points is gonna be the length of this list, okay? I can do this. And then for the duration, for the start and the end time stamps, and for this, well, so I have to do something else. Well, I can, I can sort this list here, okay? So, um, uh, I, well, I, I could use a for loop that we were using, like we were using before, okay? Uh, but I, I'm gonna use here like a sorting, a sorting, the, uh, uh, sorting the list, okay? Because I'm, well, I don't have to. I could just uh, traverse it and keep the minimum and the maximum, but I'm, I'm, I'm lazy, okay? So really, I'm, I'm running out of time as well. Do I? Okay, okay. 
like so so for, for the information of the people the comment came from actually a customer that they stopped uh, working with okay so they already paid okay so yes this is inefficient so yeah you got me okay but you have already paid so it should be fine okay so okay so please come again so uh, let's let's sort it okay so uh, we we here to sort it um uh, for each one of the points so how do we sort them okay so we can sort them by tan stamp okay and i'm so lazy that i'm not going even to convert the tan stamp which is a, a string okay but because of the format of the string this is gonna magically sort the data by the time as well okay and now well now so why i'm doing that because i can take now this the first element and this is the the tan stamp of that first element and i like to live in the wild side eh? because uh, no one nobody's one thing me that i have uh, actually well one well, one element yes I, I should have one element right at least no so yes well i'm not sure i'm not sure actually and then the n status same thing okay uh, this is the right status and this is the last one the right status Ah, the duration. Oh, the duration. I have to. I have to parse the time stamps. I hate it. I have. Fo hopefully, I have the cheat sheet here. Okay. 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 I'm gonna parse this. Okay. So, the to parse this, the the sorry, no, it's actually after sorting. Okay. The start time. I have a. I have the same function that we had in the previous example here. Uh, I'm gonna take the first one. Time stamp um, and the N one is, time is, is also time stamp. Okay, this is the last one. Okay, and now sorry, I have here the cheat sheet, so I just so I have to call this here. And now when I do this, I think I can do now here this the end time minus the start time and it should be seconds okay let me check here did it should be seconds this is seconds okay so basically <coughs> the details here are not so important the important part is that we have now the full state to be able to do whatever we want with it okay and now once we emit the aggregated output we can apply additional primitives on top of it like keeping the longest sessions or whatever okay so then then we can do complex event processing it's a little bit unpleasant because we have to write all this boilerplate for the state okay but then if we have done that well it should work now now oof, now the difficult moment okay so will this work or not i have no clue eh? so let me see one error okay so interrupted so i okay i made a mistake somewhere probably okay ah i did a silly mistake thank you thank you you are right yes i'm not in here the element right uh, ah totally totally thanks okay nice catch because i had literally no clue about what was going on okay so thanks so you saved me okay this is also a customer of mine okay well you have already paid so well <laughs> well uh, you are invited to coffee here in iran another error okay so i have probably made some kind of mistake here and let me oh a match syntax error oh syntax error my favorite okay so let's see i thought my syntax was like crispy clear but i have uh, oh i have here oh i have this this oh i need to remove this and then i need yes because i reformatted my code oh so i screw up totally okay now oh it's gonna be a tough day yes let me actually let me let me do <laughs> let me do that okay yes 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 i think it's something like that okay so uh, let me uh, you will allow me to actually let me exit the presentation mode because i don't see anything 
okay okay this is well formatted this is well formatted this is well formatted and now this okay let me see and let me see what we get what I get here generate short object has not attribute read okay so then I have done some kind of mistake here with this Ah, okay, 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 okay. So I made a mistake because this is already red, okay? So I, I, can, I don't have to do this here. It's already the output of the state where I'm passing here, okay? So I'm, it's in here red, okay? And it's in here uh, red, okay? And then I have to also do this, the same. No, this is the key, and then the key state red, okay? And then here for the key. Okay, I think it now should work. Now, oof. That was a difficult moment. Okay, so we are finishing now. Okay, so almost uh, we are well, well. We are done here. Okay, so basically, what we have done. Okay, we have done a session algorithm based on the state and timers, based on the properties of the data, using only one window, the global window, and uh, thanks, meaning, and um, and some timer because that's unavoidable. Okay, there lots of more use cases for uh, state and timers, like the ones that I ha have been uh, shown by Miren. You can use it in combination with Windows. It's safer to use it in combination with Windows, but most of the times, this is how I use it because uh, it's just handy to be able to group things in a streaming, not always based on time. Based on time, it means that it's very difficult to predict, okay? Uh, um, uh, at least in my opinion. So, so well, so I hope that, that uh, the example worked in your case, okay? If it didn't, so, well, you have the solution branch. I was almost uh, going to switch to the solution branch uh, one second ago, but now it, it has worked, okay? And, and, well, it's now time for your questions. Uh, questions, more questions? Yes. So, so what happens if this crashes? Uh, this is this is a good question. So this is runner dependent. Okay. So what happens in data flow if you have a mistake with one message, for instance, or more than one, but one message, that uh, and that throws an exception in Python, that is gonna be repeated forever, basically. So the pipeline will not crash, but it will keep attempting to run the same object time after time after time. Okay. So when that happens your only alternative will be draining the pipeline, waiting for some time until all the, the, all the rest of the data has been processed, stop it, fix it, and relaunch, okay? This is a runner-dependent uh, runner um, uh, behavior, okay? So uh, my recommendation would be always to try to uh, um, preview the situations in which your pipeline can fail, and the ones that you know to how to handle, like parsing errors and these kind of things, um, like deal with that in your code. So to make sure that every message has always a path in the pipeline. Then forget about transitory errors and all these, like network errors and these kind of things because those will be solved by retrying itself by, 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 by in, the, in this case, data flow. But other runners work in the same way. Update the pipeline is not an option if it's failing. Okay, ah, I see that, I see. So you want to be able to restart the pipeline, but uh, read the previous state and, and, and keep continuously, yeah. Bin doesn't, let's say, doesn't deal with that. Again, that's a runner behavior dependent, um, 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 runner, uh, runner dependent behavior. No, you cannot store externally the, st the state. Okay, you, you could do that. I mean, if you take the value of the states and you put it as an output in your pipeline, if you were running in data flow, for instance, you can update, like Lorenzo said, the, the mentioned updates. So you can update the pipeline and then it the new version of the code will take over of the previous version, reading the state as it was uh, before the update. Okay, so you can do that, but you cannot like automatically store the state somewhere. Okay. it's. If you're running in Flink, for instance, 
you can try to do a checkpoint and run from a checkpoint and that will ha that will have also the state if it's a, if it's available there okay but again it's a runner dependent behavior and uh, for instance in a spark i don't think it's possible to do this i'm not sure uh, but i'm not sure right? uh, maybe it's possible okay and and bean doesn't doesn't deal with those details okay so uh, it's up to you or up to the runner to make sure that the state is stored somewhere so you can restart from some previous state, okay? In Dataflow, it's called the streaming job updates. In a runner, it's a checkpoints. In Flink, it's checkpoints. In, in other runners, I don't know. So. If you use PAPSA, the only thing that changes is this here, um, this. This input, so you are assuming that you are reading strings for from PubSub, you can read the strings or PubSub messages, which is a class. If you are reading strings from from PubSub, you just like it's a P collection of strings, and it works in the same way. Like this is the beautiful part of uh, of Apache Bean, the, like the beauty of Apache Bean that you can use batch or streaming and they are interchangeable. Uh, the, this will be one liner, and even even more because here we are. We are putting the timestamps explicitly in the data. Uh, with PubSub, you can use options in the connector to automatically populate the timestamps as well, taking them from PubSub, uh, from the PubSub attribute, and then you, got, you don't have to deal with that, okay? And it's even easier, okay? But, but if you just want to, let's say, to switch one for the other, just put here PubSub IO read from this topic, and it will be exactly the same, except that this will be running forever, okay? Because it's a streaming. <coughs> 